With Test Complete 10 and the mobile module, you can test mobile applications running on Android and iOS devices. Now in order to perform automated testing for those types of applications, you're going to need to instrument your application and possibly tweak a few of your device's settings. This screencast explains how to repair an iOS application and devices for testing with TestComplete. Now we're going to assume that you are a member of either the iOS Developer Program or the iOS Enterprise Developer Program and that you have a mobile device running iOS 6 or 7. Most of the actions I'm going to show you today are being performed on a Mac computer in the Xcode IDE, which you can download from the Apple Developer Member Center. You're also going to need access to a Windows computer where Test Complete 10 with the mobile module is installed. And now a little bit of background about developing iOS applications. Every iOS app is supplied along with a provisioning profile. And this provisioning profile is a collection of certificates, device identifiers, and other assets that associate the application with an authorized Apple developer. It also determines how the application is distributed, whether it will be distributed publicly via the App Store, or if it will be private, uh, either ad hoc or in-house. Provisioning profiles are created in the member section of the Apple Developer website and different developer programs offer a slightly different set of available provisioning profiles. In order for you to perform automated testing of your application with TestComplete, we recommend that you sign your application with the iOS app development profile. And by doing this, you'll be able to deploy and launch the application with the special test commands that TestComplete provides. Applications that have been signed with the ad hoc or in-house profiles can also be tested with TestComplete. However, you won't be able to deploy or launch those applications automatically. So you'll have to either already have them running on your device or find an alternative method to automate launching them. Now, due to certain specifics of the App Store itself, iOS applications signed with the App Store profile cannot be tested with TestComplete. And the other way around, TestComplete enabled builds cannot be distributed via the App Store. Because the TestComplete agent library that we'll be using during this session uh, has private APIs, the applications that use it will be rejected by the App Store. So therefore, we suggest that you create a separate test build of your application and sign it with the iOS app development profile. Now, the iOS app development and ad hoc profiles of a usual iOS developer program, not the iOS enterprise developer program, allow launching of the application on a mobile device only if the respective device ID was added to the profile beforehand. Now this is general to mobile, this is general to iOS development in general, it's not specific to TestComplete. So to prepare your iOS app for use with TestComplete, we need to do the following steps. We need to add the test device to the application's provisioning profile. We're going to create a separate build for testing. We're going to add the TestComplete agent library to the project. We're going to tweak a few build settings, and then finally we're going to create an IPA file to actually test. Now as I mentioned earlier, the provisioning profiles of the iOS app development and ad hoc types of the standard iOS developer program define a list of devices that you can use with your application. So in order to test your app on a de given device, you have to add that device to a list. And the easiest way to do that is to come into Xcode on your Mac, like I've done here. And I've also connected my iPad to my Mac via a USB cable. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go into the window menu in Xcode and I'm going to say Organizer. Got my device right here. And I'm going to choose Add to Member Center. Now you may also have a button there that says Use for Development. That works too. Uh, once you've done that, choose your account, and that's it. Now the device is ready for testing. So let's move on to the iOS application we're going to be testing. To keep our release builds intact, we're going to create a separate build target for our test builds. So I've already opened my application here in Xcode, 
and I'm going to find my targets here and I'm just gonna duplicate this guy and I'm gonna rename him from orders copy to orders test complete now there are a couple of other places where I need to do that same renaming process and so what I'm gonna do here is go into the product menu and I'm gonna go to scheme manage schemes and we're going to rename orders copy to orders test complete and then there's one more place I need to do that you'll notice over here in the navigator we've got an orders copy info file I'm going to modify that to be called orders test complete as well okay now in the build settings for this new orders test complete target we're going to make a couple of other tweaks here as well. You're going to want to make sure that you're on the all section so that you can see everything here. Uh, but in the packaging section that you see down here, right there, we're going to change our info plist file to be orders test complete. And we're going to set our product name to be orders test complete as well. And that's it. Now this build is ready and we can modify its settings. In order to access the iOS application data from Test Complete, we need to compile this application with a special Test Complete agent library. Now this file is shipped with Test Complete and it lives at this directory on the system that you installed Test Complete on. I've already copied that file from my Test Complete PC onto my Mac here. And so now to add that library to the iOS project, we're going to go up to File, and we're going to say Add Files to Orders. I'm going to browse out to where my where I saved that library. In my case, I just put it in my Documents here. It's the and there it is. And now here in the Add to Targets, I'm going to uncheck the Orders target and I'm going to check the orders test complete target that we just created. And now we'll say add. And now back here in Xcode on the build settings section, we're also going to scroll down here under the linking section and we want to make sure that other linker flags is set to this all underscore load space dash objc. And that's all we need for the build settings iOS applications are distributed as IPA files and so we're going to compile our application and create an IPA file for it. We'll later use that file on our iOS device and so in order to do this we have to configure a few other settings. You only need to do this once for our project though so in Xcode we're going to go back to our scheme here and we're going to choose edit scheme we're going to choose the archive option right here and we're going to make sure that build configuration is set to release once we've done that we say OK and now we're going to go back to the scheme menu here we're going to select our device in this case my iPad is named white iPad we're going to go to the product menu here and we're going to select archive Xcode is going to take a moment and do some processing Okay, I fast forwarded a bit. You can see that my application uh, has been archived successfully. And so now what I'm going to do is select my app, that's this one right here, and choose distribute. And we're going to save this for enterprise or ad hoc development. Next. This is my only provisioning profile, so I'm going to go with that and then click export. And now we're going to save this out to a particular location. And once we've created that IPA file, we can then send it from our Mac over to our test complete computer, either by uh, emailing it to ourselves or using a flash drive or some other method. So now we can prepare our iOS device. Now, test complete doesn't need you to jailbreak your phone or tablet. Uh, the only mandatory requirement for members of the iOS developer program is that the device is listed in the application's provisioning profile and we've already done that. Now there are a couple of other things you can do that are optional but may be beneficial and for starters we recommend you change a few settings on your device. So in iOS if you go into your settings 
widget and then go to general and then set the auto lock equal to never that will prevent the device from locking the screen during the test uh, keeping the screen on may this will prevent the device from locking the screen during our test one other thing to mention is that keeping the screen on may actually discharge the battery so we also want to reduce the screen brightness and to do that just go into wallpapers and brightness and move that slider all the way to the left to the minimum value that will reduce the battery consumption of the connected device and these settings will help keep the device functioning during the run one other thing to note is there may be a prompt that appears when you connect an iOS 7 device to a new computer uh, you just want to tap trust if you see that prompt appear so now we're ready to test that application that we've just instrumented so I've already logged into my Windows 7 system here I've already launched test complete and so what we're going to do now is create a new project I'll call this uh, the iOS test and we're going to choose an iOS application for our project type and here we can add the IPA file to our project so I'm just gonna say add here and then we'll browse out to where I've saved my IPA file which is this guy right here and I'm also going to choose to deploy this to the device on start so what that's gonna do is copy the local IPA file out to my iPad so that it can then be tested with test complete. We'll say OK here and then I'll click finish. All right, so now our project gets created and you can see that our IPA file has been added to the list of tested apps. In fact, we can open that up and see all of the same types of properties as we would have for a regular uh, Windows client application, for instance. So now we're going to right click and say run selected and test complete is going to bring up the mobile screen here it is and you can see that our application has been launched and once the uh, app is available we can then interact with it so we can switch over to our object browser and you can see we have insight into all of the components that make up our application and that means we've properly prepared the app and can access its internal objects so as you can see it's quite easy to prepare an iOS application and device for testing with test complete to learn more about how to test iOS applications see the video creating tests against iOS apps with test complete and for more information on testing mobile applications please visit our website at smartbear.com thanks for watching and we wish you luck and hope you enjoy testing your mobile applications with test complete